geezer. Designer radiators and towel rails. This is a consumer information video exclusively about central heating radiators. It will answer these seven questions to fully educate both domestic end users and tradesmen. We have separate videos for electric radiators and for dual fuel radiators, which run on both central heating and electric. So ensure you're watching the correct video. Hi, I'm Daniel, part of our sales team, knowledgeable in all technical aspects of our products. Hi, I'm Alex, director at Giza. Let's kick this video off by making one thing clear. You won't find any standard fluted panel radiators here in our range. We specialize in mid to high end designer radiators. The perfect solution if you're looking for something more aesthetically pleasing. The difference you will find here is the quality of our products. We put focused effort into everything we do, just like the attention to detail that's gone into making this video. The same meticulous approach goes into the development of the Giza branded product ranges. In addition to our own lines, we are stockists for leading industry brands such as Bisc, Ursat, Aeon, Atlantic, Terma, Zender and Vasco. Our entire product range is shoulder to shoulder in terms of quality, as we don't design or import any inferior quality products. They just don't make it through the door here. Don't just take my word for it. Take a look at our independent customer reviews page on Trustpilot. The common thread you'll read about from our customers is their high opinion on our product quality. As you begin to learn more about our ranges throughout this video and on our website, the features and benefits we offer will become very apparent. So let's start further educating you to help you buy your central heating radiator. How do I calculate the required heat output? Primarily, we recommend using the highly advanced heat requirement calculator on our website. This uses the very latest user interface with slider bars. Simply select central heating from the drop down at the top. You'll then answer a series of questions about wall types, window areas, etc. You can enter the room dimensions in either meters or feet as you prefer and it will then give you the results in both BTUs and in watts. Lots of our customers have knocked down walls to create a large open space. This space may be a long rectangular shape or an L shape. To calculate the requirement for an L shape, you can enter each side of the L into the calculator as a separate room. Then simply combine the two individual requirements together for the overall space. And now, the secondary way you could work out your requirements. When your home was constructed, the builder would have spent time specifying the right radiators. Therefore, you could use their output to determine your requirements. If you're replacing standard panel radiators, we have charts on our website which tell you the approximate output of the different types you'll find. Remember, if your room isn't quite warm enough, increase the output of the existing models for the new replacements. What's the difference between BTUs and watts? This simply refers to the two different ways you can specify heat output. BTU is an acronym which stands for British Thermal Units. As such, this is a measurement typically only used in the British Isles. One BTU is the amount of energy needed to heat one pound of water to one degree Fahrenheit. So this is why the BTU's figure is always up in the thousands. It will take a lot more than one pound of water at one degree to heat your whole room. Watts is just another way of listing the output, like centimetres versus inches. The rest of mainland Europe only uses watts as the measurement for heat. The equivalent watts output will always be much lower than the BTUs figure. And it's very easy to convert BTUs to watts, or vice versa. BTUs equals watts multiplied by 3.41. Watts equals BTUs divided by 3.41. What does delta mean in relation to BTUs? You may notice that next to our BTU heat outputs, it states delta T60. This term simply refers to the conditions under which the heat output was tested in the lab. To put this in context, the output of this radiator could be listed in three different deltas. At delta T50, which is commonplace across mainland Europe, it gives 3,500 BTUs. At delta T60, which is commonplace in Britain, as used by Giza, it gives 4,400 BTUs. And finally, at delta T70, which is rarely used as it gives very overinflated outputs, it gives 5,900 BTUs. So the actual heat given out by the radiator is the same, 
but see how the delta used affects the listed output. Let me explain the process for testing heat output. This will help you understand where the delta bit comes from. The labs used for testing heat output on all of our products are all compliant with European EN 442 regulations. This stipulates the conditions for testing heat output. The radiator should have a flow inward water temperature of 75 degrees Celsius and a return outward temperature of 65. This makes the average water temperature inside 70. The test has to be done in a lab with a consistent air temperature of 20. If we minus the air temperature of 20 off the internal temperature of 70, the differential is 50, or a delta T of 50, hence delta T 50. The resultant outputs from these tests, as listed on all of our radiators, have been converted to delta T 60 for the purposes of the British market. Our heat requirement calculator works in T60, so it's perfectly matched to our radiators. When comparing radiators from different suppliers, be mindful you are comparing like for like in terms of the delta output. If the delta isn't specified, like it is on all of our products, you should ask the supplier what delta figure is used for a fair comparison. On our website, you'll find the calculations for converting between different deltas. So now you understand delta, what it means, and how to fairly compare radiators from different suppliers. How does the shape of a radiator affect its heat output? Okay, here's some tips to help you choose the styles, which maximize the output. Firstly, the more water a radiator can hold, the more heat it would give. So these large 40 mm diameter size bars have a high volumetric capacity. This means a cylindrical bar design like this will emit a lot of heat. Secondly, in contrast to this, a flat bar design such as this, popular as they are, don't hold as much water. The internal space is very thin in comparison. Therefore, these won't give out as much heat as the cylindrical models. However, if you prefer this look, you can get a double panel. These essentially have two layers of bars on them, so give much more heat than a single panel model would. Thirdly, for people with a more traditional taste, you could opt for a column radiator. These are unique and have three variables to work with. Height, which ranges from 200 to 2,500 millimeters. Width, which range from two to 40 columns wide. And depth, which range from two to six columns deep. Column radiators offer more output for the more columns you add. Therefore, these are very efficient at achieving high outputs. Fourthly, aluminium radiators are also very good for their output. This is called an extruded aluminium radiator, as each of the individual bars are made up from a length of aluminium which has been pushed through a die. Caps are then placed along the top, as seen top right, to finish the product. These aluminium models hold a lot less water than the mild steel equivalent. This means much less water is needed from the boiler, which means you'll have a reduced energy bill. They also offer two combined forms of heat, radiant from within and convected heat projected out of the top. This is why you see the little chimney grills on the top of the caps. So all in all, aluminium is a very energy efficient option. Finally, colour choice affects the heat output of the radiator, believe it or not. This painted radiator gives out 6,200 BTUs of heat. This is the same size radiator, but in shiny chrome. As you can see, this gives out 4,900 BTUs. Shiny chrome insulates, meaning it will emit approximately 20% less heat compared with a like-for-like -like painted model. Think about why you wrap tinfoil around a baked potato in the oven to keep in the heat. Well, chrome is the same as it keeps 20% of the heat within the radiator. So there you are. Now you know lots more about how the style of radiator can affect its heat output. What options do I have in positioning my radiator valves? When choosing your new radiator, Check where the threaded entry points or tappings for your valves are located. Historically the tappings were always located on the sides of a radiator. This meant the valves were positioned on the sides. Like a pair of ears either side of the radiator, not impressed us neither. So presto. The majority of our models allow those obtrusive valves to go underneath. As you can see here, this provides a much neater looking finish. The valves are much more discreet tucked underneath. Less of this messy look down the sides, a 
and more of this neater look. Lots of new build homes have this system behind the radiators. It has two plastic flexi pipes coming out of the wall. These are great used in conjunction with a radiator with underside valve connections. The flexi pipes can be cut down and the TRV heads put in place. So the finished look is extremely neat. We advise you talk with your plumber and ask what they expect the finished installation will look like. There is no need for pipe work to be on show like seen here on the left. These valves could have been positioned underneath, like on the right, with no visible pipe work. We provide these unique features on the product and give you this guidance to help you take control and show you don't end up with a ropey looking installation. We also have a dedicated video specifically about choosing radiator valves. Watch that for more information similar to what we've discussed in this section. Where is the best place to physically locate my radiator? The ideal place to locate any radiator is on an outside wall and under or next to a window if possible. To put this in context, here you can see a window where cold air will come in and travel downwards. Here is what happens above a radiator. Heat is emitted and travels upwards. So if you place a radiator under a window, this is what happens. The cold air coming in through the window is mixed with the hot air coming up from the radiator, which then combines to create a nice, ambient room temperature. What should I know about the installation process? So let's talk a little more about installation. Once you receive your radiator from Giza, be sure to open it up on receipt. Check for any cosmetic damage causing transit, Have you had strictly 48 hours to report this back to us. Be sure to appoint an experienced plumber. These will be equipped with the latest technology, such as this laser spirit level, to ensure all your radiators are hung perfectly straight. More importantly, however, we have found with very inexperienced plumbers, they can often leave customers with new radiators which don't heat up as they should. This is due to checks they may have failed to make. Let me explain. Firstly, when removing and replacing radiators in the system, your plumber should complete a process to balance the system in addition to the job of physically fitting the radiator. Naturally, the pressure or force of the water reduces as you get further down the chain away from the boiler. This means the pressure reduces and the heat reduces also. Balancing evens out the pressure of the water so all radiators get adequately hot. Balancing is particularly important when taking out a horizontal radiator and replacing it with a vertical model like this. The water is now internally pushing against gravity to get up and around the new taller model. If you find your new radiator isn't as hot as the rest, you can attempt to balance the system yourself. You simply need to close one of the valves on every radiator in the system, turn clockwise to close, except on the new one. Now switch on the boiler, allowing the full pressure of the system to go to just this new radiator. Once this is hot all over, slowly open the valves on the other radiators one by one and you'll have balanced the system. This new radiator should now stay nice and hot all over, keeping your room nice and warm. A second issue you may find with a very inexperienced plumber, which also causes uneven heat distribution, is the lack of an internal diverter plug being fitted. Higher capacity radiators need this to work efficiently. Again, to explain. Let's imagine this sewage pipe is the bottom bar inside the radiator. Once the boiler is on, the flowing water will naturally look for the quickest way in and then out of the radiator. As seen here, this will be in one side, straight across the bottom horizontal bar and back out the other side. This means only the bottom of the radiator is hot. By putting a diverter in place, the water hits an internal barrier on entering, forcing the water up the first bar, across the top and down all the other bars. Now all the bars will be nice and hot and not just the bottom bar as before. The internal position of the diverter plug can vary as most geezer brand radiators can be fitted horizontally or vertically. Printed instructions on where and how to fit the diverter plug are supplied for your plumber. For those of you who have a radiator which doesn't have the option of a diverter and it's only hot across the bottom, we sell this retrofit diverter accessory. Your plumber can insert the tapping on the flow side to create a diversion as the water hits this rubber disc inside. Problem solved. So now you know a little more about shoring a successful installation of your new radiators. This is advice our after sales team regularly gives out to customers facing uneven heat issues. Nearly always these tips resolve the issues for them. 
We hope you have found this video about central heating radiators insightful. This should reassure you of our expertise and give you the confidence to buy from us knowing that we are specialists in what we do. We also have a separate video all about choosing your radiator valves. We also recommend you see this. Thank you for watching. Geezer Radiators, a hot spring of designer heating ideas.